every life starts with a single cell even human being beings we were a single cell at first the single cell divided to form two cells two formed four four formed eight and this process continued until a baby is born now the fusion of the male reproductive cell known as the sperm and the female reproductive cell known as the ovum forms a zygote zygote means joined so it is the joining or the fusion of the male and the female reproductive cell now the zygote reaches the uterus in 5 days now within these 5 days a number of changes takes place in the zygote let us see see fertilization between the egg or the ovum and the sperms take place in the oviduct now after fertilization the zygote undergoes cell division to form two cells two cells form four until a mass of compact cells is formed by the end of 5 days and this compact cell mass is known as the blastocyst the blastocyst reaches the uterus within 5 days and finally by 7th to 8th day it gets embedded in the uterine wall so how does the fertilized ovum moves along the oviduct towards the uterus well the structure that facilitates this movement is the cilia present in the oviduct see the cilia continuously moves and pushes the zygote towards the uterus see the zygote moves along the oviduct and finally reaches the uterus where it gets embedded this embedding of the blastocyst on the uterine wall is known as implantation now when a female becomes pregnant that is the ovum gets fertilized by a sperm then the menstrual cycle stops happening the endometrium layer is maintained and is not shed what is responsible for this maintenance of the endometrial layer well the connection for the first time between the mother's body or the uterus and this cell mass is known as the placenta see in this picture the placenta is just beginning to form now what is the function of this placenta placenta secretes progesterone which maintains the endometrial lining so the endometrial lining thickens so that this blastocyst remains embedded into it but it has been seen that the placenta does not secrete progesterone for the first 3 months of pregnancy then what is responsible for the maintenance of the endometrial layer for the first 3 months well the placenta secretes another hormone known as the human chorionic gonadotropin or hcg which which helps in maintaining this endometrial lining how so human chorionic gonadotropin or hcg maintains the corpus luteum and prevents it from degenerating now we've already discussed that the main function of corpus luteum is to secrete progesterone which maintains the endometrial layer see when the progesterone forms a peak level the endometrium is also its thickest now why is this hormone hcg known as gonadotropin well gonads 
are the organs that form the reproductive cells. In males, gonads are the testes and in females, gonads are the ovaries. Now what does tropin mean? Well, tropin means to stimulate. So this hormone stimulates the corpus luteum present in the female gonad or the ovary to release progesterone and maintain this endometrial layer. Now, pregnancy test kits can give a result after about a month of pregnancy. Why is this? Well, this is because within a month, zygote forms into a blastocyst. Blastocyst gets implanted in the uterus and the placenta is formed. Now, the placenta secretes the human chorionic gonadotropin. Now, the amount of this human chorionic gonadotropin, which is responsible for the maintenance of the endometrial lining, becomes so abundant in the body that some amount of it is also released in the urine. And so, when this stick is dipped into the urine, it tests positive for this HCG hormone. So, when two lines come, it means that that female is positive or positive for the hormone HCG that is, she is pregnant.